Last week, we had some fun with Funica Pro and Generative AI in the newly released Photoshop 2024. You guys seem to like that, so let's do some more and take it a little bit further. Let's dive in. Okay, here's our scenario. This is the video clip that we have to work with of this helicopter that is either just landed or just about to take off. You can decide. And the key is that the camera is locked down. Camera's not moving at all, which is critical for this to work. Now, I really want this helicopter to be, uh, I've just landed on a mountainside in a big mountainous area with no people around. And obviously this isn't a big mountainous area and we've got this landing strip here and this windsock and this soccer goal, all things we don't want. So we wanna replace all that stuff. That's number one. And number two is, I want this helicopter to be in a different place in the frame. In this case, maybe I want to move it down here. And I'm doing this to show you that you can reposition your animated objects in your video frame when you're generating a new background. So to do those two things, first what I'm going to do is open the effects browser with Command-5. And then in the mask and keying section, I'm going to add the draw mask to my video clip. And then I'm going to draw an area that isolates the object I want to keep in the scene, which in this case is the helicopter. I'm purposely not including this soccer goal post, and I'm purposely not including any of this bigger shrubbery here because that would be included when generating the new background. So if I were to do that, then in Photoshop, it would use that content to try to generate the new background. And I might not want that included. I want this kind of just flat area and then mountains outside of that. The other thing I need to be careful about when I'm creating this is not to make it so small that something doesn't get, that something gets cut off. So if I scrub through it, I can make sure that rotor is getting cut off a little bit, maybe right there. So I need to make sure it's large enough that as I scrub through the clip, the thing that's animated, because it could also be moving around, I need to make it large enough to accommodate all of that. And I can make it a little bigger than I really need to because I'm going to need to shrink that down a little bit in Photoshop. So my goal, again, is to make sure that the object's not being cut off and I'm not including other objects that might get included in the generative AI in Photoshop. So with that done, now what I'm going to do is switch to the Transform tool because I can now reposition, scale, and rotate this anywhere in the frame that I want. So I said I wanted it down here. It doesn't really matter, but let's just go ahead and put it down here. And I'll also scale it down a little just to show you you can change the scale. I could also rotate it, but not really useful in our case. I'll undo that. So I've changed its scale and its position. And with that done, I'm now going to export a still frame. Now, it doesn't really matter where my playhead is because this isn't moving around and I've included the entire area of movement. So I'll go to the Share menu, Save Current Frame. Next. A JPEG is fine. I'll call it Copter. You see I've got one in there, but I'll overwrite that one. Replace it. I'll go to Photoshop. And I'll open that up. There it is. So with my Lasso tool selected in Photoshop, I'm going to draw very close to that original area, but I'm going to leave some area outside of it because it's the area outside of the selection that's going to be used by Photoshop to figure out what to do in terms of how it blends this background into the new background. And in fact, I can make this even a little smaller. I'll hold the Option key down to subtract from my selection. I just need to make sure I'm not bringing it down so far that my animated object gets cut off. I could probably take a little bit out here too. Something like that. And I think I want to actually increase it a little bit here. I don't want to, I'm getting too close to that because I'm going to feather it. So I'm going to hold the Shift key down and add a little bit to my selection there. There we go. So now under the select menu, I'm gonna add a little bit of feathering. Since I'm pretty tight, I'm not gonna add a full 10, maybe just about five pixels. And I'm just feathering so we get a decent blend between this and our new scene. Now I'm gonna invert the selection with Shift Command I. So now everything is selected except for this area inside here. And I'll click on Generative Fill. I want some mountains, so I'll type dense mountains and click generate. 
And this goes fast at first. It's going to slow down a little bit, and I'll speed through it. I'll cut to the end. But it takes about 20 seconds, I'd say, to do the whole thing. That was more like 12 seconds, but there we go. Wow, that looks fantastic. And we've got two other options to select from over here. We've got this one here and this one here. They all look pretty good. This doesn't seem to blend in quite as well right there. That looks better. I like that one. The other thing I'm thinking about here, by the way, in terms of selecting something, I'm gonna to wanna to do a little push in on this and I don't want anything that will give it away because of the lack of parallax. And we've got foreground separated by background. Any camera movement will show parallax and we won't have it because we have a still. So I wanna kinda of stay away from that. I think this one might work a little bit better for our purposes, so I'll use this one. Now, obviously, if these paths are meant to be roads then this helicopter is way too big for this scene, and you'd probably want to use a much more scaled down version. You'd need to go back to Final Cut and start over with a more scaled down version or see if you could generate something that has larger roads. And this is part of the trickiness about generative AI. You could really do a very similar thing if you had a stock photo that had exactly what you wanted at the right scale and use that as well. I'll do a separate tutorial about how to do that, but let's just go with it here. So with that done, I'm gonna turn off the background in order to have a hole for our original video. And then I will export a PNG and let's call that mountains. And then back in Final Cut, I'll press Command-I to import. Import that. Move the play to the start of the project. Command-5 to close that effects browser. Select that still and press Q for connect edit. Then I'll move my play to the end of the video clip, select the edit point for the still, and press Shift X for an extend edit to extend it to match the duration of the video. Fantastic. So now we have our new background with our original helicopter shot scaled down and repositioned in the area that we want for our shot. For the movement, I'm gonna select both of these by dragging a marquee across them, then press Option G for a compound clip, and I'll call it Copter in Mountains. And now that we have this single compound clip, I can go to the Crop tool, select Ken Burns, and create our movement. Now by default, it's starting in closer and ending full frame. I wanna reverse that, so I'll click right here to reverse that, and then I really don't want very much movement at all. Too much movement, like I say, will give away the parallax or the lack thereof. So I'll just have it move a little bit like that and I'm repositioning the ending so that we're pushing in towards the helicopter. I'll click done and play that back. And we've got a nice push in to reveal our heroes who have landed on the mountaintop and are about to rush off on their big adventure. If you like the content, Subscribe down below. Leave us a comment. We'd love to know your thoughts. We'll see you next time.